from the campus studios of Sarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hello listeners and welcome to another episode of Ropecast, and I'm very happy to welcome back my brother Neil for a further discussion about uh, assessment in education. Hi Roger, thanks for inviting me back. Yeah, You know, Neil, the... Uh, teaching excellence framework uh, that was introduced some time ago in England and Wales to attempt to assess teaching quality is already having an impact, for example, on which universities are expanding and which are not, and some maybe even facing closure. Yeah, I think it's important for certainly listeners to podcast in Germany to be aware of there is very much a pecking order amongst English universities some of which are perceived to be better than, than the others. Yeah. Nothing to do with the new teaching excellence no. framework. Well, you have things like the World University Rankings, which is a long-running way of assessing universities overall, but that is only partly based on teaching. Excellence is usually perceived in those world rankings of universities like Oxford, yeah. Cambridge, London, Durham, St Andrews in Scotland, yeah. Edinburgh, and so on. And they have a very strong pull not only among students in the United Kingdom, but amongst their parents as well. Yeah. So they are perceived to be better than, in inverted yeah. commas, other universities. And their graduates do tend to get the best jobs. That's There's a lot of statistical evidence. And the, the so-called Russell Group, I don't yeah, know if you yeah. want, you, you've heard of that phrase. That's the their sort of um, group of what are regarded as the prestigious uh, institutions in the UK. And there are some changes coming out, whether it's to do with this TEF or not. But there are changes as a result that the Russell Group universities have been given targets to attract students from unusual backgrounds. In other words, students who might not normally go to university. whose parents didn't go to university, for example. So there are allegations that they've reduced their gradings on admission. Mm -hmm. And admission tutors have been quizzed by... Uh, Parliament about this as well, the Education Select Committee, had there been a downward pressure on admission grades as a result of that at Russell Group Universities, because obviously there is a knock-on effect on that. Mm. If those prestigious universities are taking in more students on lower grades, then it means some of the other universities will not be getting those students. So that's an interesting dilemma. Yeah. The other thing that interests me is this is teaching excellence framework. So all they're looking at is teaching, and they have this ranking system, gold, silver, and bronze. And if you look at the the lists of world university rankings, the overall rankings, and then the teaching excellence framework, you find, for example, the London School of Economics, which always comes in the top 30 world rankings, um, is given a bronze... Really? In the teaching assessment. Oh, that's astonishing. Yeah. I mean, the word is, well, an institution that concentrates on research perhaps neglects teaching. Mm. So there might be um, a playoff there. If you concentrate on one area of university activity, other areas may suffer. Well, that sounds to me as a very simplistic analysis. Yes. Yeah. Uh, But I can see how people might assert that. But, um, I mean, from my point of view, progress for students at the college where I teach into higher education is about a whole range of things where you judge them to be excellent, Mm. of which teaching is obviously one. And the outcomes at the other end, progression into employment or or training, a good job of some kind or another is another. Mm. But also how that university looks after its students. Are they treated is, is there some kind of uh, parental mechanism that looks mm-hmm. after those children yeah. as they move away from the home environment? Mm-hmm. And I say that as a parent as well. Yeah. Well, there are huge differences there between the UK and Germany. And it's interesting for me, because I've had most of my career in Germany, that there is enormous resistance to any idea of outsiders assessing the excellence of teaching, and particularly among German professors who don't want even a small proportion of their funding to depend on any kind of competition, including this kind of TEF-style assessment. And I think um, professors in Germany have a great deal of power, a great deal of decision-making possibilities, and they 
would feel very uncomfortable about even colleagues who are not professors being involved in assessments like this. Well, as a visitor to Germany, I mean, obviously one of the things I've learned over the years is that the universities are not centrally funded by the federal government, which is a, a very significant difference. Mm. And of course, some of the lender, like the Saarland, for example, where we are now, don't have the resources that others of the lender do. Yeah. And therefore, any kind of comparison is going to be dependent on the resource yes. available to that individual university. And I think that's a very good way into another aspect of this whole complex matter. If you don't have tuition fees, universities may find themselves short of funds. And there is, again, great resistance among German students to any idea of reintroducing tuition fees. And they're often unaware of the consequence. They complain about poor buildings, poor facilities, very bad staff-student ratios, without considering that these might be a result of the fact that they're getting free tuition. Again, that's a very significant difference from England, mm. where obviously students have to pay tuition fees, £9,000 a year at the yes. moment, very significant sums, and the loans which they then have to repay over yes. 20, 25 years. So it's almost like getting a mortgage on a house. Yes. OK, for th well, thank you again for helping us to make these comparisons. And I hope we can welcome you back to Zobrakan again pretty soon. Thanks very much. Thanks for welcoming me here. Right. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.